Hi guys, welcome back to Mandy's Mommy Moves. If you're new here, my name is Mandy. And today what I want to talk about is getting ready for a craft fair. So from, you know, conceptualization to actually being at a craft fair, um, I took down some notes. Pretty much my whole process of getting ready for a craft fair. It is a lot of steps, but it is easy. And once you do it once, then you'll kind of understand like where to go from there. It's pretty forgiving, but um, so the first step, finding a craft fair. So I know that they're not easy to find, um, so it's just a matter of being part of a couple of Facebook groups. And you know, just kind of learning through word of mouth. Um, for me to find it, I actually had to Google craft markets near you. So the thing is, um, I'm in the niche of pacifier clips, um, making teethers, that kind of thing, which is considered handcrafts. So what I did is I went on Google and I typed in my location and then I typed in craft markets or craft fairs near me. And then it brought up like a whole array of craft fairs that were near me. Then I uh, went on each website and then looked up like the information, like how much it costs to sign up for that market. I also did some research on the amount of people that was expected to come to that market. So your best bet always is to try to find like a market that you know has been successful in the past because there's nothing worse than sitting at a market and only like five people show up and you are just sitting there waiting for hours for people. And most craft markets will penalize you if you try to leave any kind of early. So five minutes early, 10 minutes early, a lot of times they'll penalize you and not invite you back. And you definitely don't want to start burning bridges that way. My very first market that I signed up for, signed up through a Facebook group. And the lady was very forthcoming with information. She would email constantly back and forth and everything. And we show up to the market, my very first one. And I think I only sold two things, but there probably was like a total of like 10 people who came through to shop because they didn't market it very well. Um, so that would be a tip too. Make sure that if you are going to a market, part of a market, that you actually market it through your social media, your email, um, friends and everything like that. At the very beginning, I was kind of embarrassed to do it because I felt like everybody was gonna judge me and was hoping for me to fail, but you'll get past that. It really does take um, a lot of confidence to market yourself, but um, if you're working hard at your craft, then you should be very confident in what you're selling. And if you're not confident in what you're selling, then you shouldn't be selling it because that means that you wouldn't buy it yourself. So for research purposes, um, I did write down a list of every step that I went through to get ready for this craft market. And I've done a ton by this one. I've only been in business since February, well, Valentine's Day to be specific, of um, 2021. So not fully a year yet, but during that whole time, there was a lot of trial and error that I had to kind of get through. I honestly just, I kind of just went balls to the wall. And as soon as I found markets, I would just sign up for them. And I don't recommend doing that. I definitely recommend like making sure that you do your research on the market that you're going to be part of because you want to make sure that it makes sense for you. So um, I said... For my list, I said, look them up and see how big of a turnout they typically have. They'll normally have pictures on um, their website if they've done markets in the past and hosted markets in the past. And that's a good indicator of whether or not that market is um, going to be for you. Um, also, evaluate your price point because a lot of these craft markets, they can range in price from $20 for um, a booth all the way up to like seven, eight hundred dollars. So it does need to make sense for your price point. My price point is about twenty-five dollars. Well, I would say from like fifteen to twenty-five dollars. Um, so signing up for a seven hundred dollar market doesn't make sense for my price point because I would need to sell a ton of products to see any kind of return on investment. Like your goal when you go to these markets is not only to make back the money that you spent to have that space but also to make a profit and I would break even if I'm lucky at a price point at 700 so just think about that if you have a product that you're selling for a hundred dollars two hundred dollars you maybe only need to sell like five or six of them that makes more sense for you 
I like to stay within a hundred dollar range. I would say um, from the very lowest number being like twenty dollars all the way up to I think I'm willing to pay about two hundred and fifty dollars. It really just depends on the kind of size of market that I expect um, to get the return on my investment. So that is definitely a good point. Another good point is location. Make sure that it makes sense for you to be traveling far um, to get to get to these markets because um, I don't recommend traveling like hours and hours away. One, because you have a lot of stuff that you have to bring. But two, um, your first few markets, you wanna make sure that you're marketing to your friends so your friends and your family are not gonna travel hours out just to support you. Being um, someone who actually owns a business and my friends and family know about it, only a few select people actually uh, are very supportive of it and they'll buy from you. But a lot of times it's strangers more often that will support you more than family and friends. So don't get mad at that. Don't get um, turned off by it. It just is what it is. You can look at any group and they will tell you. Um, I got more support from strangers than I did from family and friends. And that's perfectly okay. Um, so definitely just look at your location. Uh, if you get a few markets under your belt, I would say try to be as close to home as possible. Um, just because it just makes all of the difference. You're going to be frantic your very first show. You're going to be, um, you're going to stay up late. Most markets start early in the morning and you probably are going to be up to three or four o'clock in the morning the very first time you do a market because you're going to just be looking over everything doing last minute tweaks and stuff like that so i definitely advise getting a lot of rest and um just pray before you have your market because your nerves are going to get to you i i had I had like a lot of nerves, like I had bubble guts my very first market because I didn't know what to expect. I've always been to markets. I've um, done a lot of shows, but here in Northern Virginia, there's only like a few shows that are like common. Um, so my next step is evaluate on what you need and get yourself prepared for that because um, most craft fairs give you like a 10 by 10 square foot space. So um, when you are getting prepared for that market, just make sure that you don't have stuff that that is too big for that space because a lot of times if it is bigger then they'll require you to purchase an additional um, space which is probably going to be double the amount that you paid for the very first space so keep your eyes out for that the things you will need tent. so you would definitely need a tent um, I would go with white because white is more common. Um, some craft markets require you to have a specific color and they don't want you to go outside of the color and the most common color is white. A wagon because you need to be hauling that stuff back and forth and trust me, it's nerve boggling trying to get everything back and forth and people are looking at you and then there's seasoned veterans who've been doing it forever and you feel like you're a failure because they have everything. You're not gonna have everything on the first try, but this list is to help you kind of consider what needs to be brought for your market to kind of be successful and for you to be at ease knowing that you have everything you need. So I have a I have tent, which I use the Ozark Trail tent, which I got from Walmart. And I think I spent like $150 on it. If you can invest in a more expensive one, I would because I bought that tent. And one day it was really, really raining and everything was just like seeping through like the little stitches because it's like stitched together. Water was seeping through that and you don't want that. Um, I got a banner. So um, a banner that will have like your company name or your logo or what you sell. Um, I find that that's really important. I didn't have that my first show also. Um, I didn't have that to a couple of shows when I made a couple of uh, um, some money and then I had the money to actually purchase one. I have a big banner um, that says Grace Baby Co, which is the name of my business. And then at the bottom it says, you know, pacify clips, teethers and keychains because that's what I sell. Um, and it is pink and white, which are my brand colors. And I got that because it's easy to see from far away. Some people are, have like the banners that you stand up and on a pole in front of like the, the booth. Um, some people have it on their table. I have mine hanging up, but I also want to get one for my table as well. But it's easy to see from far away. So I recommend getting that. You want people to 
be drawn to your tent. And if you don't have anything that stands out to them or that they can't understand what it is, then they're not going to come to your booth. Um, weights. Weights are very important. Um, you can get weights from like Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, um, any kind of Gander Mountain, any kind of like wilderness store, survival store, you will need weights for your tent. And you can use sandbags or the actual weights. I have the actual weights. Uh, and that's just to prevent your tent from blowing away because there's going to be some markets that are outside that is so windy that your tent is going to be sliding all over the place. And that becomes a liability issue very, very quickly. A lot of markets won't even let you in if you don't have something to weigh your tent down because it ends up becoming a liability issue, it becomes safety issue. Um, chairs. You can get just the foldable chairs that you would bring to like a football game. You can get them from like Walmart. Like you don't have to spend a ton of money on these things, but this is stuff that you might want to think of. Some markets may include a table and a chair. But I always just bring my chairs just to be on the safe side because who wants to stand for five, six hours? Um, not me. The next thing I have um, is a trash bag because sometimes you're going to accrue trash. There's going to be other vendors maybe selling food or maybe you bought something and you need a trash bag. Just have like just a little trash bag and sometimes even like a, just a little plastic bag to dispose of things works just as fine tables i recommend buying six foot tables or if you can an eight foot table um the collapsible ones because those are easier to load into a car but also anything bigger than that you don't want it sticking out of this space but also you don't want it too small where you got to have like a million tables just to display your products so definitely um i would recommend six foot tables you can get it off of amazon or you can get it at target walmart once again, I keep mentioning those stores because you don't need to spend a lot of stuff. You don't need to buy a $250 table or a $250 craft table. You can go to those places and get a $30 table, a $50 table. It doesn't need to be a lot of money. Also, tablecloths. Um, I got my tablecloths off Amazon. I have the stretchy one. So it's the one that um, you type in what size table you have, which I have a six foot table. And it's like a spandex material. It stretches over the table and over the legs. So it makes it very neat. So when I have a whole bunch of boxes and stuff because I've been unloading all of my things, I can just stick it under the table. I don't have to worry about it being like you know, insight for all of my customers to see because you definitely don't want your booth to look junky. You definitely don't want people to see a whole bunch of trash and random things just sprayed about because a lot of times you're going to think, um, oh, I'm just going to put this up. But after a while, you may see like, oh, my table looks cluttered and it makes it hard for customers to decide what they want when it's too much to look at. So that's what that cloth is for so that I can hide everything underneath my table. And I recommend getting two tables, two tables minimum. One table is just most of the time never enough. Um, the next thing I have on here is business cards. Make sure you bring plenty and plenty of business cards. Um, you may run out. There may be people who's going to grab one or two. Sometimes they'll grab a couple. Oh, I have a friend that um, would like this, or blah, 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 blah. Just bring plenty of business cards. I'm be honest, nine times out of ten, like maybe you'll get two customers from the cards that somebody grabbed from you but for the most part you just still want to always have um a way to market yourself even when you're not present in front of them the next thing oh and business cards you can get from like vista print um you can order it from staples it doesn't have to be zazzle does business cards make sure you have your name all of your social media on there um, with your company sales and your brand logo. I can't stress that enough. Make sure that you have your brand logo on all of your merchandise. Um, the next thing I have is a POS system. So I have a Shopify store, um, which is gracebabyco.com, and it's a Shopify site store. I went on Shopify, and they was doing like a limited time deal where they was given these portable POS system, which would be like the equivalent of like Apple Pay or so. Um, and I ordered it and it came in. All you have to do is just go on 
online, sign up your um, information, attach like where you want your money to go. Mine automatically goes to my Shopify store um, just so that once my Shopify store pays me, I already know where it came from and it keeps track of all of my sales for tax purposes. Definitely come um, with a, um, a portable charger as well because if you're using your phone and you're not using like a... Um, like an iPad, some people use iPads, I want one, but they were sold out everywhere. But I just bring a portable charger just in case my phone ends up like going low. And plus um, for your POS system, sometimes you may need to use like a hotspot for it. So not all markets um, are able to provide Wi-Fi, so just keep that in mind. Um, I have personal fan. If you're doing it in the summertime, I recommend like getting one of those little stroller fans that you would get for a baby. Um, just go ahead and order that. It has like the little flexible legs that you can wrap around something or you could just stand on your table. On your table. Trust me, you are going to want that portable fan because you're going to talk so much. You're going to be burnt out. You're going to be standing right in the hot sun and that sun is just going to be beaming on you. That personal fan is like a godsend. I really, really, I recommend just buying it. I think it was like $20. Um, comfy shoes. You were standing. I recommend standing. I know I stressed the importance of bringing your own chairs, but you definitely don't want to be sitting down when people come to your booth. You want to be able to engage with them. And there's nothing worse than seeing somebody sitting down when they're perusing your product I mean when you're perusing their products it kind of just looks like they don't really care about your business I most of the time nine times out of ten I stand the entire time which would be like four hours five hours and I just want people you know if they're walking by like to just you know see me standing there and they see me you know just present with my products and not like it's selling itself even though my products are good and they can sell themselves I'm also a representation of my products like I want them to sell and I want people to come over even if they're not interested in a product maybe they see me smiling and I look friendly they'll come over to my table just to be curious as to what it is that I'm selling um prices price correctly price your products the way you want them to be um, perceived because you don't want to undercut yourself but at the same time you don't want to make your stuff too expensive so I always have stuff at different price points on my table so that anybody who just wants to shop and they don't really have anything in mind there's a price point for everyone so I have stuff on my table that are five dollars like five dollar keychains that I make all the way up to $25 teethers and then I also have bear can glasses that I customize that I sell as well but there's something literally at every price point five dollars no actually three dollars because I had like little keychain fidgets as well so from three dollars all the way up to twenty five dollars um, just because you just always want a different price point because if they see one thing and it's twenty five dollars they may say oh that's too expensive and that's not saying that you need to undervalue like how much your stuff costs I'm just saying that they're more likely to purchase from you than someone else if there's some something there that they can afford $25 isn't a lot, but $25 can be a lot to some people. And sometimes they want to be able to um, shop like everyone else, but they can't afford it. Have something there at a different price point. Like I said, they'll be more likely to purchase from you. And um, the very last tip for that is to pack your car at night. Do not pack it the day of because the day of, you're going to be frantic. You, I don't know if you have to drop kids off because... Um, they can't come with you to the market or if you got like a million or one things to do trying to find your way to get there pack your car the night before I can't stress that enough there's nothing worse than rushing out of the house and then you're rushing to pack your car the day of and then you end up forgetting the integral part of what you really need for that day so park I mean excuse me pack your car the night before it just makes a whole world of difference, I promise you. Um, the setup. Most markets will allow you to set up up to two hours prior to the event starting. Make sure you get there early enough to actually have time to set your table the way you want to. 
um, what I did is before my first market, I set up a table in my basement and I, um, I literally put everything on my table and adjusted it accordingly to how I wanted it to look when I got there. It, it shortens the amount of time it takes for you to set up your table at the market when you already know how you want it set up. I set it up, played around, tweaked it, and saw the flow of the table. Oh, that's too many things. Let me take something off, and then I'll just, you know, replace it as it runs out. But do not clutter your table. Um, set your table up the night before, just or not the night before, but before the event, just so you have an idea. And then I took a picture of it. So then when I was setting on my table, I just had my phone propped up with the picture and I was able to see exactly where everything was and instead of it taking me an hour, an hour and a half to figure out how I wanted things laid out, it only took me like 10 minutes to set my table. So I definitely re recommend that. Um, and then having things at various heights. Having things at various heights is going to attract the eye of the buyer. So. If you have everything flat, well, if I'm all the way over there, I can't see everything that's that you're selling. I, I can't even see anything because I'm not in eye view to be able to look down and see your table. So it's important to have stuff at various heights. So like maybe you have like, you know, something that's standing up vertically and then you have stuff, some stuff sitting down. Maybe you'll have like a tiered shelf, that kind of thing. Maybe you'll have something, you know, sitting like right beside you and then if you can wear your product wear your product um you definitely want to everyone to be able to see what you're selling and not have to think twice about it um let's see oh and then the very last thing is um market yourself you need to market yourself you are there to sell your product you are there to sell your business um if you don't market yourself then people may feel like you don't even need their business because you're too good for their business and the whole purpose of you being there is to sell it, what it whatever it is that you're selling so smile be personable be knowledgeable about your product I remember um, my very first market someone was looking at these teethers that I had and I had like wood rings on them and they asked me what kind of wood it was and because I was so nervous I could not for the life of me remember what kind of wood I used for those those teething rings and it made me look bad they ended up buying from me anyway that was God's grace but I would never be <laughs> standing there like that again like I was really like wrecking my brain trying to remember like what kind of wood this is so be knowledgeable about your products um they're not going to steal your business from you they're not going to try to reproduce it themselves some people are very conscious about what they're putting in their bodies or um what they're giving to people and they a lot of people are like all natural or certain things or certain things are harmful blah 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 so just know your product um so that you can be able to explain it and to be be able to sell it even better so i'm really bad at this because it's so awkward but i am learning my husband normally accompanies me and he's better at it than i am but make sure that you encourage your clients or people who are looking at your table to follow you on social media and to sign up for your email marketing list i don't do this enough and i wish i did because when christmas came around i wanted to you know send out like a whole like uh um a mailer and I didn't really have a lot of people to send it to because at those markets where well, I'm coming across 150 to 200 people and yet I don't have enough people signed up not because they didn't want to sign up but because I didn't ask them to sign up and it's okay some people are going to say hey I don't want you know my information out there they think you're going to sell their information or they think that you're going to spam them that's perfectly fine but if you don't ask them they're not going to sign up for it so just ask them if it will be okay if they can if you can have their email so you can send them any sales or anything that's going on with your store or um have them follow you on social media encourage them to tag you whenever they're using your products because that's good publicity for you that's good marketing for you and then make sure that you respond always respond if they tag you on something respond reply because you want to show that you are active and that you appreciate them doing that they don't get paid to market your stuff so them posting one of your products on their social media that's good for you and that's free publicity for you 
So make sure that you reply, you know, thank you or a heart, anything. Just make sure that you're replying that so that they know that you appreciate it. Um, also, become friends with the vendors beside you on either side. It's not a competition. Nine times out of ten, y'all are not selling the same thing. Um, these people who organize these craft fairs, they are very aware of who sells what, and they make sure that they don't put you in the same position right next to each other, right across from each other. They want to give everyone an equal opportunity to sell their products. So um, make friends with your neighbor. You may end up finding out that you know they know of some markets that you don't know of that you can sign up for. Hey, there's a market in Bowling Green. You wouldn't have known that had you not talked to them. Um, or if you need to run to the restroom, hey, can you watch my booth for a second? I just need to go to the restroom. Make sure no one's messing with your booth. I promise you, everyone is super friendly at these markets. I've never been, I've been to, I want to say at least 15 markets. Maybe I'm inflating it a little bit. But every single market, I've met somebody and everyone was super friendly. So just, you know, and then also, like, it's good for knowing someone who is doing what you're doing not necessarily selling what you're selling but the craft vendor life is a very different um thing to kind of tackle and a lot of people can't relate to it but someone who goes to those markets and sells at those vendor fairs all the time they can relate to you and you'll have somebody to bounce ideas off and that kind of thing so it, networking is always going to be a big thing and you know make friends with them it's it's always like a a good positive to meet people who do the same thing that you do um i think that's it don't take yourself too seriously have fun talk sell your product that's what you're there for to sell your product no one is judging you some people may give you you know constructive criticism take it they're the consumer and you're the maker of the product so if they're giving you constructive criticism of what they would prefer you need to appreciate that because you're selling to them. You're not selling to yourself. Um, so that's it. I hope this helps. Um, I know that spring is right around the Well, maybe not right around the corner, but spring is around the corner and signing up for these vendor markets is right around the corner. A lot of people sign up months and months and months in advance. So if you can, start looking it up now and signing up for them now. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below and I'll respond as I get them. Um, any video ideas, please um, comment in the comments below and subscribe. And thank you so much for your time. Have a good day. Bye.